Well, today's young men face a lot of distractions. Porn is just a click away on any screen. Marijuana is legal in Canada, and it's even encouraged, and self-esteem is a huge problem. So how do we help the young men in our lives navigate these landmines? To shed some light on these issues and solutions is youth culture expert Jonathan McKee. Jonathan has a brand new book out called Guy's Guide to Four Battles Every Young Man Must Face. Jonathan, good to have you back on 100 Huntley Street. Hey, always good to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, the first thing I want to ask you, and, and maybe it's an obvious question, because, you know, as you research these things and you're talking to young men and parents, that this was an important book that you felt you needed to write. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's one of those things where after I do a parent workshop, parents are always coming asking me questions. And if they say, okay, my son, you know, I have a question, I can almost just ask it. I mean, I already know what they're going to, they're going to either ask me about, he plays Fortnite all night long and, and can't stop. And if he didn't have screen limits, he'll just play forever, you know, or he found some pictures he shouldn't be looking at, you know, or all his friends at school think smoking weed is no big deal. Why can't I mom? You know, so, I mean, I know the questions are going to be asked and, and these are some of the things we need to start addressing because as parents, sometimes our tendency with these subjects is to overreact instead of interact. So here's a book that not you know, a book that we're not just going to hand them, but hopefully we could sit down and have some interactions and talk about these important subjects. You know, when I was a kid, you know, pornography was available, but you had to seek it out. And mm -hmm. I remember my first exposure was a neighbor actually showing me a magazine, Playboy magazine. But it, and again, that was wrong and, you know, he shouldn't have done that. But you had to go look for it. Now you can come across it accidentally. I mean, when I go to a sports website to find out about how, you know, one of my favorite teams is doing, there are things there that can hook you immediately. So, I mean, we live in a very dangerous time in terms of the battle in the mind. Yeah, and I think I had that exact same neighbor because the exact same <laughs> thing happened. But you're right. We had that kind of like seek it out where now it seeks us out. I think the biggest yeah. difference is we now have... Um, you know, more accessibility and less accountability. More accessibility because we carry this device with our pocket into the bedroom with us. As a matter of fact, Common Sense Media just put out a survey saying now 68% of teenagers take their phone into their bedroom with them at night. So think about this lack of accountability because, you know, it follows you in the park, into school, to the restroom, into the bedroom, and they have access to click on all these different images and stuff. So these temptations are there and we need to equip our kids when they encounter these, how are they going to respond? We need to start having these conversations. So how did you come up with four? Because I, I mean, you could come up with many more, I'm sure. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess you have the four, then there's sort of the, the sub sections <laughs> as well. But why did you pick those four? These are the four big ones. Uh, I'm in the youth ministry world a lot. And when you talk with a youth pastor, if you say, hey, what are the issues you have with young guys? they would just tell you straight up. They'd go, oh man, sexual temptation, mm -hmm. screens. You know, they, immediately they would rattle off these things. And, uh, you know, another one that, that I think the one that's funny, people automatically would, uh, you know, would say, oh, weed, porn, Fortnite. You know, they, they'd throw those three out. But the other one is just kind of who guys are today. There's this pressure, there's this self-esteem. So the struggles with self-esteem is the one that might be the one that would be kind of hard to coin. But if you talk with most parents uh, who, who have, you know, young men in their lives, they know that, that right now there's this kind of this, this who am I question. And a lot of it has to do with this device we have in our pocket. Because if you think about it, I mean, a decade ago, we didn't have a device that had social media right there with us. So mm -hmm. now basically this device has become kind of a barometer of self-esteem. It tells us exactly how popular we are, how many friends we have. And so, so much of life today is measuring up on this device. I mean, if you make a mistake and, and, and fall in the middle of campus, somebody probably could take a picture of you and post it all yeah. over the place on that device. So, so this device is a big part of who we are now. And it's made that struggle that's been a struggle that you and I probably had when we were kids even more so. Yeah, it's just like throwing gasoline on the fire Absolutely. kind of thing with the availability. Okay, let's uh, let's go to the four. Um, so sexual temptation, we've already kind of hit on that. And in the book, you, you gear this towards the young men, but you also gear it towards the parents and grandparents as well. So how do 
we as parents, as grandparents, uh, help the young men in our lives deal with the sexual temptation, pornography, and the other things that are out there? No, absolutely. Good question. Because even though it's a book written for young guys, I know that usually it's mom or dad or grandma or grandpa who buys the book. And I encourage the grandma or grandpa or, or you know, whoever to not just hand the yeah. book to the guy, but to sit down and have these conversations. Because see, what happens is so often parents tend to overreact in this situation. And and we have to start thinking about this, you know, again, this is one of those areas where we need to keep our eyes on the calendar. Our kid is gonna be out on their own for sure, you know, someday, probably maybe even when they're 18 years old, they're gonna be in an army barracks or, or, or a college dorm somewhere across the country. And, you know, when they encounter these temptations, they're gonna be making these decisions on their own. The question we have to ask ourselves as parents is, are we equipping them for that day? And so as we start giving them good information about this, about, you know, about, you know, God's design for sex and intimacy mm. and what that actually is. We need to have start having some of these conversations because a lot of parents go straight to, hey, what's the perfect porn block? What's the perfect filter that I can protect my kids? Hey, they're not always going to be protected. They're going to be out there making these decisions. Let's start talking about how to make these decisions. Yeah, and be premeditated about it rather than just reactionary. Absolutely. So how do you, as a, as a follower of Jesus, uh, and I know we have people that are not, you know, watching that are, are looking for advice. They may not, you know, have the same understanding that we do of the Bible and the person of Jesus. But how do we have those talks without sounding religious? Like, you know, don't have sex before marriage because the Bible says that yeah, probably no. will drive them away more than it'll pull them in. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I never take that approach in the book because uh, they don't really want to be told, you know, just, just don't do it. They really want to know the why. And that's why we got to get to the why on so many of these issues and, and talking about, you know, real struggles. That's why I even take, you know, I take some popular music in the book. I take artists that are on the top of the charts like Cardi B and g Easy. I took a song of theirs where g Easy actually makes the claim about how many one night stands he has in a year and, and he uses a condom every time. So what's the big deal? And so I sit there and go, oh, okay, so let's explore that. Mm. What's that actually look like? Is that, is that a, you know, if you use a condom every time, are you actually safe? I actually take them to the Center for Disease Control website and talk about some of those issues. So I give them the why. I give them some information about some of the consequences that are out there and why they might want to consider waiting, not denying, but delaying sex and saying, hey, this is something that, that you know, it, and then I do bring it to God's design because what an important perspective for them to understand. Hey, this is the way you're created. And you know what? God created this awesome gift that you get to enjoy sometime. And here's why it's worth waiting. And, I, and what I appreciate about your book and, and the way that you handle things is you take the positive. You also bring in facts. So let's go to screen time because yeah. the, the pornography, the temptation, they kind of blend together. They do. You got the gaming, the kid in the basement, the young man there for hours playing his favorite game. How do we approach that without, again, the nagging, don't do that yelling down the stairs sure because again that that doesn't really you know accomplish too much well as I said before I mean a lot of parents aren't putting these screen time limits on when we hear that 68 percent of young people can take their screens to their bedroom with them so that's why I talk to young people directly in this book and I sit there and we talk about you know about screen time and and considering the time they're spending I I, I don't say video games are bad I say video games are actually really fun but do they master you? Are you a slave to your video games? With a lot of stories and a lot of, you know, uh, you know, a lot of reasoning, I talk about how video games can be a fun thing, but how they shouldn't be controlling our lives. So these are the conversations that we can have where we as parents can honestly sit down and play video games with our kids, yeah. interact and talk about how fun they are, but hey, now let's go out and let's do some of the stuff we need to do too. As a matter of fact, let's go out and let's work on, you know, let's mow the lawn, let's go hunting, let's go do some let's stuff. Let's go shoot some hoops or something yeah, like life, that. Life isn't all screens as fun as they are. So controlled substance uh, in Canada is, is different than the U.S. because it's state by state. But Canada, uh, marijuana is legal uh, and now it's acceptable. It, there's been the cultural shift. So how do we speak into those things? Well, it, it's tough because, you know, recent surveys show that only 26% of high school seniors actually even think marijuana offers any risk of harm. So this is one of those things where we gotta realize, hey, 75% of the young men we're talking to graduate from high school think marijuana is no big deal. Yeah. So to talk to them about some of these issues, I don't even argue about legalization or medicinal use. I talk about one thing, the effect mm -hmm. of marijuana on the developing brain, because research is so clear cut. Even pro pot advocates don't go there because they know it hurts the developing brain. So we talk about it and I, and I simply say, hey, listen, when you're 25, when your brain's done developing, because for young men, that's when it is, 25 years old, 
He can make the decision. But until now, well, you got a developing brain. Let's let the brain do its work and keep developing, and let's not put this stuff in your system. These are, that's just one of the conversations we can have. Yeah, whether it's legal or not legal, it's still dangerous. The last thing, self-esteem, uh, you know, the media part of that is, you know, with social media, uh, you know, you talked about the likes, the, you know, on Facebook yeah. and all those kinds of things. Uh, Instagram, those things can really affect, you know, young people, especially young men, because yeah. they, they want to be the macho guy, and if they're getting put down, you know, it's become a real problem. Yeah, it's amazing how much today the issue of identity, who am I, has just been a growing issue. So this is one of the things we talk about. We talk about our identity isn't tied up in how many likes we have. And, and again, to bring the conversation back to believers, you know, I tell you, for believers, our identity is in Christ. It's not about me. It's about Christ in me. And so to be able to have that focus and be able to, you know, focus on positive activities like serving others and, and doing good things, it's amazing how that can give young people purpose. And we, this is a generation that actually wants to make an impact. They want to make a difference in the lives of others. So here's an opportunity to talk to them about what that actually looks like and not getting so caught up in self. Well, we just barely skimmed it, but yeah. I hope that we have, you know, set the, you know, the, the, the plate here for people to want to get your book because it's important. Again, it's not only for the young man, it's also for parents. And as you said, don't just hand it to them. So I get the book. It's a Guy's Guide to Four Battles Every Young Man Must Face. Jonathan McKee, always good to have you on the program. Thanks, man. Fun to be here. And we will continue with more of 100 Huntley Street.